a quick uh, recap of uh, what we were doing yesterday. Uh, so, uh, we were talking about uh, the problems with trying to measure uh, the y parameters of uh, for instance an active network uh, right uh, here again I just take a simple example of some some amplifier do not worry about the biasing details uh, it is got uh, you know some y matrix say y 1 1 y 1 2 y 2 1 and y 2 2 and uh, uh, you know as we have uh, been talking well it is not physically possible to have a perfect shot right at the terminals of the box. So, there is some cable of some length and then you know you are kind of uh, terminating uh, the other end of uh, uh, the cable and likewise uh, here. And this is the source and this is uh, basically you hoped that these cables are small enough so that the voltage uh, applied here appears across port 1 and uh, likewise uh, the short circuit that you placed here is effectively a short here. But as we have already seen uh, uh, with our analysis here the that is only true when uh, the, uh, the, uh, the frequency of operation times uh, you know the delay of the transmission line or equivalently the length of the cable is uh, is very very small uh, compared to one and uh, uh, so in most practical cases you know it is uh, 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 that omega times T d being much smaller than one is not satisfied. At any rate uh, the uh, even for a short line this perfect shot is only true at DC and is not true at uh, any other frequency. But there is a more serious problem and that has to do with feedback within the device right. Uh, so, for example, uh, this uh, this term y12 uh, quantifies the effect of of uh, uh, you know when you excite the uh, the output port with a uh, voltage, what current flows in the in the input port. Ideally, remember that that y12 must be in a transistor or uh, you know any amplifying device. You would like that y12 to be zero, but uh, uh, you know as you have. Uh, uh, seen uh, you know in your both your device classes as well as your circuits classes uh, the equivalent circuit for this uh, uh, for the MOSFET is that there is a parasitic capacitance between uh, the gate and the drain. Likewise if you have a bipolar transistor there is uh, again uh, a parasitic capacitance between uh, the collector and the and the base and uh, it follows that uh, you know if you make uh, uh, you know if you use multiple devices and then you know you make a bigger amplifier. Uh, through such effects since each one of these active devices is not truly unilateral when you put them all together you will find that the resulting device is also the resulting amplifier is also not unilateral. So, any amplifying kind of two port will have some undesirable you know uh, within quotes feedback right. Now, uh, the impedance looking here unfortunately right because of uh, uh, the transmission line terminated in the in the short circuit or an open circuit if you want to measure z parameters basically uh, you know uh, uh, can be thought of as a bunch of tuned impedances right each resonating at uh, what do you call uh, uh, you know uh, you know 1 by i don't remember the uh, 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 i think it's 1 by uh, uh, what was that 1 by 4 T d and you know 3 by 4 T d and so on it looks like open circuits right. And uh, uh, so, if uh, uh, you inject I mean remember the the amplifying device is reacting to a voltage that you apply here by by pulling a current which is y 2 1 times uh, let us call this v 1 this is y 2 1 times v 1 right. And uh, that is this current is going through potentially an impedance whose uh, you know magnitude looks like this right. So, you can see therefore, that there is uh, you know this uh, uh, the uh, this current is, is subject to an uh, to a load impedance with uh, with uh, a high order load impedance with uh, whose impedance can become very very large right. So, if there was no feedback if y 1 2 was 0 that would be no problem at least as far as stability is concerned right. 
Now you have a high order with Y12 unfortunately, there is if there is a large voltage here, then through Y12 there is some there is some feedback uh, through the uh, two port and uh, you know that also sees some very large uh, frequency selective impedance. So, if you want to think about the loop gain, remember the loop gain is basically of the form you know uh, uh, the exact expression is uh, uh, is messy, but uh, you can see that it depends it should depend on Y21 times whatever load you have there right ok. That is the voltage and then part of it is fed back right. So, that times y21 times you know whatever this impedance is and so on. So, this basically uh, you know appears in the loop gain and now Zl is a the, the order of that Zl is very high and y21 times Zl is you know the peak value of y21 times Zl can become very large because Zl is virtually an open circuit. So, this therefore, the loop gain function if you want to think about it that way basically is is a high order uh, transfer function with a lot with a lot of gain right. And you know that if you have a high order transfer function with a lot of gain, then it is very easy to uh, uh, you know uh, for uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the closed loop system to have poles in the in the right half S plane and therefore, uh, the close I mean the moment it turned out that uh, uh, when people were trying to measure the admittance parameters of uh, uh, of uh, transistor amplifiers, they found that all of a sudden uh, you know the whole setup if they were uh, unlucky uh, could just go in flames and then uh, or simply burn the transistor because uh, well the uh, this whole system would start to oscillate right because of uh, the feedback within the device and these uh, uh, you know high order effectively high order impedances at the load and the and the source right. Um, so, in one of your assignments you will actually uh, uh, you know put a transmission line and see how simple it is actually to make something uh, you do not even have to try ok, uh, I just it will simply oscillate. Hmm? right and uh, uh, so if the device was small i mean uh, and uh, you know you if, if there was a lot of oscill i mean the oscillation amplitude was very large then the power dissipated inside the device would be much larger than its uh, rated uh, rated power and the transistor would just burn right and if you had a power device uh, 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 for example you were trying to make a power amplifier and were trying to characterize uh, 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 a transistor for instance uh, then uh, uh, you know uh, because of the large parts involved you could even basically uh, kind of uh, uh, get into a small fire accident ok. Uh, so, uh, so clearly you know the uh, the whole notion of trying to measure uh, uh, voltages and uh, I mean uh, the uh, admittance or the uh, impedance parameters by where the two port is. Uh, is terminated with uh, open or short circuits is simply does not work in practice ok. And uh, the reason is that you know if you have a long transmission line as we have seen you know terminating it in a short uh, basically causes this weird impedances at, uh, at the other end of the line. And uh, uh, therefore, we need to find a way around uh, around this problem. In other words what we need to do is figure out a way in which we can measure you know whatever I mean you know the uh, 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 the parameters of the uh, of this uh, two port right where the length of the transmission line has. So, what is the the root cause of this problem is that the length of the transmission line depending on the length of the transmission line you basically start to see different impedances at at, uh, at this point right or uh, this uh, looking back even ok. Uh, and uh, the longer the transmission line you know uh, the more frequently uh, you know you start to see resonances. And what you want to do therefore, is to make sure that the length of the transmission line at least to first order has no influence on the impedance that you see uh, the trans the, the, the two port sees. Hmm? So, what do you think now that you know all about transmission lines what do you think uh, uh, you want to do?
if you want the impedance, uh, you know, you, you, I mean, physical realities, you can't get away from the cable, right? Okay. So, uh, so, and you want the impedance looking in here to be independent of the length of the transmission line, right? So, what do you think we can do, right? Yeah. So, basically, you say, oh, well, uh, you know, I know the characteristic impedance of my transmission line and, uh, you know, it is uh, some, uh, it is a long cable uh, with some length uh, uh, T sub D and uh, I should basically, whatever I do, right, I should make sure that I terminate my transmission line with, with Z. Hmm? And likewise, my source also should have an impedance of Z0. So, this is uh, Z0 say T D 1, Z0 times T D 2, okay. And uh, fortunately, if the moment I do this, what happens? What is the impedance looking in here? What is the impedance looking in at the outer, I mean uh, at, uh, uh, at port 2? It is Z0 and uh, the important thing is that it is independent of it is independent of the length of the transmission line T2. So, uh, TD2. So, in principle, you can have a long cable and uh, uh, long lossless cable and the impedance will still be Z0, right, no matter how long TD2 is. Is that clear, people? All right. Likewise, with uh, uh, the transmission line uh, uh, in uh, uh, on the input side, right, okay. So, regardless of uh, uh, however la large TD1 is, what comment can we make about the Thevenin equivalent of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Thevenin impedance looking in from port 1? Oh, well, for that you short, you, you know, de-energize the source, so the so source becomes a short circuit and the effective impedance seen by port 1 is also zero, right. So, this solves a, a big practical problem, right, because now the load is no longer some you know high order frequency dependent network that we had earlier, it is simply a resistor of value xenon, right. So, this, uh, so, uh, uh, so as a result, it is equivalent therefore, even though you have terminated the transmission line, you know, uh, right, I mean uh, we could have port 2 here and you know, uh, you could run a cable at least in principle, you know, all the way to your homes, right. And if we terminated the cable at Z0, it is as if you are terminating it right at, right at uh, uh, the port, okay. So, uh, the stability problems that are associated with uh, the, uh, the measurement of uh, Y and Z parameters is now, is now um, avoided, all right. And, uh, so, this uh, you know it turns out that this was the motivation to come up with uh, with uh, 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 with an alternative set of uh, alternative two port parameter set ok. And, uh, uh, and again you know the practical motivation is this now you have to fill in all the uh, all the theory and that is uh, oh well uh, on a transmission line there is no notion of I mean voltage and current keeps changing at at every point. The only thing you can be sure is that, you know, if you know what the forward going wave and the reverse going wave is at a certain point, you can figure out what it is at some other point on the line by appropriately delaying or advancing the, uh, the forward and reverse going waves, all right. So, so that is the, uh, uh, so with this background, so let us say you have a two port. And uh, you think of this, uh, the two port as being excited by, connected to the rest of the world through transmission lines, right, with, uh, and for, for the purposes of this, of this course, we will assume that the, uh, the impedance, the characteristic impedance of the transmission lines on both ports is the, is the same. That need not necessarily be true, but most of the time, uh, 
in practice uh, you know this uh, this is a good assumption to make uh, and uh, uh, if you do that then basically you know on this uh, on this transmission line well this is port 1 and this is port 2 all right and uh, uh, you have basically uh, the incident wave here and that is uh, on port 1 and what do you call the uh, how do you denote the incident wave yeah so v1 this is on the, this is incident on port 1 so that's uh, v1 plus and uh, what uh, gets thrown back is what do you call that folks come on v1 minus, v1 minus okay all right uh, and uh, similarly uh, what's incident on uh, on port 2 is v2 plus and what gets thrown back is v2 minus all right and this is a uh, this is a linear two port correct and uh, therefore you know if you think of v1 plus and v2 plus as the cause right they are and they are and uh, v1 minus and v2 minus are the effect then simply by superposition we should expect what should we expect Well, what is reflected back at port 1 must not only depend on what is incident on port 1, but also what is incident on port 2, all right. And uh, the assumption is that these transmission lines, you know, are terminated at their far ends with a characteristic impedance of Z naught and therefore, you know, V 1 minus, you know, what is reflected from uh, port 1, right is reflected and it is gone right it is not going coming back again ok. So, V 1 minus V 2 minus is basically uh, a linear combination of V 1 plus and V 2 plus and uh, uh, basically these are the two port uh, 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 scattering parameters. So, S 1 1, S 1 2, S 2 1 and S 2 right all that in English all that this is saying is that the reflected wave at port 1 is S 1 1 times V 1 plus which is the S 1 1 times the uh, the incident uh, wave at uh, port 1 plus S 1 2 times V 2 plus and uh, similarly V 2 minus which is the reflected wave at port 2 is S 2 1 times V 1 plus plus S 2 2 times. correct and like in uh, 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 you know with our usual two port parameters y parameters z parameters we we kind of interpret y 1 1 as you know whatever right uh, i 1 by v 1 when v 2 is 0 and so on. Likewise, we would like to interpret uh, I mean you always want to kind of you know place something new uh, in a framework where you uh, you have already done something similar in the past. Mm -hmm.